people all over the world today are suffering for different reasons, but right now there are so many factors that are actually compounding the effect of this. And I want to get into number one, the shortages. People are telling me from all over the world that they are seeing products and services and so many different things that are in shortage today. Things that, you know, you wouldn't really think that this could happen, but yet it has. The second thing I want to look at right now is the shipping problems. These, of course, are correlated. And the third thing I want to talk about is the financial markets, because while you see what's happening in the economy, the stock market is clearly a, a completely different you know, situation from that. And I want to get into all of this. Let's begin. Here we go, my friends in the UK. I got a couple articles for you. Petrol panic buying begins as UK plunges towards winter of discontent 2.0. Food, gas, fuel, and labor shortages see desperate bosses offering HDV drivers 78,000 for their salaries and fruit pickers 30 an hour. This is huge. You never saw anything like this before. Oil giant BP has said it cannot maintain petrol and diesel deliveries due to the lack of lorry drivers in the UK. I have been bringing this information to you. Sure, it might be the case of one or two locations that don't have you know the, the facilities and all the logistics in place right now. But in general, as they have said, the government has said, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. But what has resulted here is a completely different situation than what the government is hoping for. Take a look at these pictures. You could see so many. If you're in the UK, let me know in the comments, are you seeing these lineups or are these just the rare cases? Look, time and time again, look at all these different places. You've got the lineups. You've got people panicking. Now, just like bank runs, they might say it's insured. They might say everything's okay. They might say we're going to stay open, but people, they go to the bank and they pull out as much cash as they can. Why? Because they don't trust them they don't trust them okay so this is just a few examples of course who knows what's actually happening but you bring it to me let me know if you're in the uk then we have this wholesale prices for gas have increased 250 percent since the start of the year and by another 70 percent since august so you can look at what's happening with crude oil and that's one side of it but what about by the time it makes it to the pump and what you have to pay People are paying more than ever before in some cases. And this is incredible, not just for the gasoline, but for all kinds of things. Okay, so let me know what you're seeing. All right, now this in Britain, rising prices and shortages evoke 1970s style jitters. Is it the same situation as the 1970s? No, absolutely not. But you have the one important factor here is that since 1980, you have seen everything come down. All the interest rates have brought, you know, been, been coming down, mortgage rates and so on. What has that done? It's made asset prices rise higher and higher. But today we are seeing inflation at highs you haven't seen for a very long time. And those who have been around since the 70s know exactly what that's all about. Long lines at gas stations, rising fuel prices, empty shelves in supermarkets, and worries about runaway inflation. Britons have emerged from 18 months of this hibernation to find their country having many of the same afflictions it did during the 1970s. They get into that, you know, right now, what I think personally is that there is a combination of factors. There's a couple fishy things that are happening as well. But the point is, most important factor here is what do you pay? And the unfortunate fact here is that you're paying a lot more for everything. Europe's fertilizer crisis spreads after another firm cuts output. I've talked about this multiple times. And if you have seen my video, very few people have. But if you saw my video about the money GPS trifecta method for investing, I specifically mentioned fertilizer. And right now the prices are going through the roof. About half of European ammonia capacity is at risk. And then, okay, why, why is this important? Fertilizer, right? Look, if the fertilizer isn't there, this is what the commercial growers are using to produce food. 
What's that going to do for the food? If your yields are smaller, guess what? There's going to be a problem for those farmers. Are they not going to bother growing? Are they going to reduce their output? Either way, it's going to affect you negatively. Now, this isn't just Europe. Of course, the whole world is going to be dealing with the same situation. All right. They're talking about uh, their situation, surging natural gas prices, squeezing their profit margins everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Same kind of situation. That brings me to this. Worldwide energy shortage shows up in surging coal, gas, and oil prices. That's right. Everything is interconnected. When you start to pull all of these together and connect the dots, you start to realize that record gas and electricity prices in Europe, record coal prices in China, multi-year high gas prices in the US, and oil prices well above their real long-term average are all manifestations of the same global energy shortage. Whether or not that's the, the case, again, what matters is you, is you. Right now, WTI crude is at approximately $74 a barrel. That just shows you that prices are certainly elevated. Now, I want to give you some information really quick moving through this. This is from Freight Waves. I'll give you several uh, articles and you can look into them deeper if you'd like. As always, the links are in the description under the sources. Just how many containers of cargo are stuck off California's coast? more cargo on ships waiting offshore than a month of imports to Long Beach. I believe the number that they quote in here is 70, if I remember correctly. Yeah, around 70 container ships. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You've never seen anything like this before. This is a record and it continues to get worse every single day. Now, a lot of people are talking about the actual containers themselves. And what happened in 2019 was they started to put a lot of these out of commission. They were saying they're kind of old, you know, they, they need refurbishment or they need to be just tossed, uh, scrap metal and so on. But then we hit 2020 and they started to say, okay, well, maybe those old things, we got to fix them up and get them ready, get them back on because they're so expensive today. And this is just a quick little tidbit. Um, they're just showing you how long does it take to actually build one. Here we go. In normal times, it's uh, reportedly taken as little as six weeks. Okay, six weeks from the time you place the order to when you get it in service. These are not normal times. The lead time this year has been reportedly as long as four months. So from six weeks, a month and a half to four months. Unbelievable, right? And you often find, by the way, the 40 foot uh, containers are, are the most common. Okay, so. This is just showing you how incredible this has become in many ways. And then you have it affecting the companies themselves. Supply chain woes drag down Nike sales, sportswear company scrambles to overcome shipping delays, Vietnam factory shutdowns. So nobody's shedding a tear for Nike, uh, I'll tell you that much, and the CEO, but what it shows you is that even the biggest companies can be affected by this. It's not just the mom and pop shops, okay? Even the biggest companies are certainly taking a hit. A major forecast haircut in a period of ripping demand? Look at this. ACT Research cuts Class 8 truck forecast based on supply constraints. So we're talking about the big trucks that deliver all the goods. This is a problem. They're not able to get what you know, you know, their own materials to have these trucks, even though they're in such high demand, they just don't have the materials supposedly. And as a result, they're basically cutting their forecasts on that. Container ships are now piling up at anchorages off of China's ports. More signs that the Trans-Pacific liner capacity has overwhelmed the port capacity. So this is just an image of showing you Shanghai, but this could be a previous date. Look, there are over 60 container ships off of LA at Long Beach, which now is 70. Just showing you there is more than double that, 154 as of Friday, waiting to load export cargo, load the export cargo off of Shanghai and Ningbo in China. Okay. There are now 242 container ships waiting for berths country wide. What you need to know, and you can see the chart right here, if you want to see some detail on you know where things are right now, check out a resource called Marine Traffic. Marine Traffic, okay? 
And then last, before we get into the Money GPS insights, Maersk throws its weight behind Unicorn Electrofuels company. The green movement, whether you love it or hate it, is seeing a lot of money riding towards it, whether this is coming from the government or whether this is coming from investors. Keep that in mind. Shortages and supply chain problems ultimately are increasing the prices that you pay for basically everything. Inflation can only be contained with higher prices. There is no other solution. You must prepare in every sense of the word. And remember, do not look at the stock market and the economy and think they are the same. The stock market could completely ignore the economy, as you have seen. Now let's talk about what's going on in the financial markets. I have said for a long period that commercial real estate is the weakest link. Office vacancies in Canada reached the highest level since 1994, depending on where you look, of course, depends on the city. There was a chart down here. If I could pull that up, now it won't appear. This showed you, depending on where you are, Calgary being the highest over 30%, uh, Toronto, I believe, was around 10%. It just shows you that this can affect businesses in a different way. Okay, there's indirect effects and there's direct effects. Looking at this, talking about the Federal Reserve, a blow to the economic outlook could see the Fed uh, rate hikes kicked into the long grass with expect expectations moving from 2023 out to 2024. Essentially just saying, oh, they're not going to increase 2022. No, 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 don't worry about that. If things are good, it's going to be 2023 because, of course, inflation is not going to pick up during that time. I mean, I can't even read this quote. It's just nonsense. Anyway, who knows what's going to happen with the interest rates, but don't think because of the dot plot. That's what they're getting this from, by the way, the dot plot. Nobody has ever serious taken that. I mean, Powell himself has basically said, the dot plot, don't, don't even look at it. The fight to control the $2 trillion crypto market is heating up. Look at what happened with China. They're doing their whole, uh, we're banning it again this year talk. And so this right now has been something that the US in a sense has said, well, well, you know, that's not bad for us, the investors and so on. So I think that anytime you have regulations in one area, it kind of opens up an opportunity in another. There are many countries, in fact, that are very... Uh, pro or at least, at least accepting to it. Look at what's happening globally right now with central banks. And you see it definitely varies, but understand that there is on a global scale a tightening. Central bank purchases set to decline. Quarterly pace of central bank net purchases, Fed, ECB, BOJ, uh, and the BOE all of this has declined from its peak back in 2020, okay? And, and we are watching this. Now, the forecast here is that it will eventually start to go into the negative just barely, and that would be, you know, towards the end of next year. So we don't know what's going to happen exactly, but you already see that with 25 rate increases this year alone, they're moving in that direction. And the last but not least, China funds counting on Beijing to contain the Evergrande contagion. You know that they have to do something. They are desperate right now. And this is huge because the Chinese property market, number one, that's 20% of their own GDP. But at the same time, it affects the entire global economy because just look, very, very uh, important example. You had problems with Evergrande. That came out of the news. Immediately, iron ore started to drop. This has a direct impact. All of the commodities that China's buying everything, they're consuming everything. As soon as they have some weakness, it will affect you no matter where you are. All right. If you want to you know, get on the insiders to get all the best details. Five days a week, I'm going to email you the video of the day. There's no spam. There's no garbage. Check it out right here at this card or at themoneygps.com. And to support the channel, it's pretty easy. Just hit that thumbs up button. I do appreciate it very much. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. All right. So just click it and I'll see you there.